tell us how this thought of performing the national anthem occurred to you. So the national anthem is something, is, 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 it's a piece of music that was the first uh, piece of music that I ever learned, uh, you know, as a musician and uh, first piece of music that I ever listened to as a child. Uh, even before I learned any nursery rhymes or before I learned any, uh, you know, lullabies. So it's, it's a song which, uh, which you know, I've, uh, I've always had within me. And at the same time, I performed with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra many times in the past. And it's a beautiful orchestra. It's a massive, amazing British orchestra. So I thought, why not bring both these worlds together and create the most epic version of the national anthem. So I approached the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. They were very glad to record. So it took about three months of preparation. We came up with uh, the entire structure of what the song is going to sound like. And then I went to London at Abbey Road Studios, which is their most legendary studios, and I recorded with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So it's the largest orchestra to have ever recorded uh, the Indian National Anthem. Okay, so how was that experience for you, recording with them? And the experience was of course fantastic because uh, sitting in that, I mean standing in that room, conducting the orchestra, listening to 100 musicians play the Indian National Anthem, it was absolutely mind-blowing and of course there was an added advantage also that uh, you know the British have ruled us for 200 years and uh, you know and getting an Indian composer to actually lead them and conduct them to perform the Indian National Anthem that was quite amazing. Okay so you have been working with Stewart Copland and you both won a Grammy, both blend so well. So how does that experience? So Stuart Copeland is an absolute legend. Uh, he has uh, won seven Grammy Awards. He, uh, 75 million uh, copies of his albums have been sold. He's made 50 Hollywood movie soundtracks. He's considered to be the greatest drummer in the history of music. So I grew up, you know, with posters of him on my wall. I was a huge fan of his and I grew up listening to his music. So during the pandemic uh, in 2020, I was starting to make a new album and I wanted to collaborate with somebody really amazing. So I thought, why not check with Stuart Copeland and see whether he would be interested. So I got in touch with him and I thought, what's the worst that will happen? He'll just say no. But then in about three to four weeks, he got back and he said that he loved the music and he said he would love to collaborate with me. And then we created this album together and that's how Divine Tides happened. You said you worked with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So you, uh, did you suggest that idea of uh, the national anthem to them or did they approach you? No, it was me. Okay. So uh, I wanted to do an epic version of the of the national anthem, as I uh, as I mentioned. And the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra is my favorite orchestra in the world. Uh, I've collaborated with collaborated with them multiple times in the past, but I've also collaborated with other orchestras too, uh, many times. Uh, but the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra is an orchestra that I keep coming back to because they are amazing. They are very very professional. They performed on some of the biggest movie soundtracks. Uh, they performed with some of the greatest conductors, greatest composers. So they are an amazing orchestra and I thought that they would be the best people to actually bring this uh, national anthem alive through this major, big, epic rendition. How many rehearsals you had to do the, the national anthem in just, in just 52 seconds combining all this orchestra? So that's the thing. It was three months of planning where uh, because there are 100 musicians, so each musician needs to know what to play. Yeah. So we have to write down everything on a sheet of paper and give them all their parts and everything has to come in harmony beautifully together. So that took about three months to do. But the recording was just about 45 minutes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Because it's a one minute piece, we did about four or five rehearsals, everything came out right. We recorded it another four or five times and that's it and it was done. Because they're such professional musicians. If it was any other orchestra, it could have taken a full day. We had to make sure that uh, the anthem sounds as epic as possible and at the same time, um, at some points, the whole entire orchestra is playing together. Sometimes we bring it down to just a few instruments so that there is a dynamic range, you know. Mm -hmm. There are ups and downs. Yeah. So that was the challenge of how to create these ups and downs. You know, there are so many different personalities in an orchestra. There's so many different instruments in an orchestra. But when you listen to the whole thing, everything sounds amazing. Tell us about the emotional bliss you felt after recording and after hearing it, our own national anthem there. So how did you feel after that? So in the ending of the anthem, uh, we have all the British uh, choir members in the orchestra, the singer singing Jaya Hai, Jaya Hai. Mm. That gave me goosebumps because like listening to them singing, listening to the British singing Jaya Hai, Jaya Hai after having ruled us for 200 years. Yeah. It, because our British Indian relationships have never been better than what it is today, right? But for me, I wanted to showcase a beautiful partnership between Britain and India. So, and uh, through the national anthem, what's your idea of uh, conveying through the national anthem now the recorded? So I wanted to create uh, the most definitive version of the National Anthem. So the idea is that we've not used any corporate money, it's completely 100% self-funded. 
there is no entity involved there is no permissions we have to take so what i'm doing is that i'm gifting this to indians everywhere in the world that you can use it for whatever purposes you want even without my permission use it wherever you want in your events in your social media if you want to put it in your films you want to put it in wherever where commercial or non commercial use use it for whatever you want that there is no monetary uh, i do not want any money i do not want any royalties just spread it far and wide so that uh, everybody uses this version of the national anthem because it's a very respectful version of the national anthem yeah so i think uh, this is what a new india is all about that you know that uh, a british orchestra performing the indian national anthem is basically a new india you have always said you are an environmentalist and in your music you want to impact that so about that sir so i've always been two things in my life i've been an environmentalist and i've been a musician mm. and uh, then you know both these worlds came together you know like uh, so now the only kind of music that i make is about the environment or positive social impact around those areas because i believe that music is a very very good way to communicate a message uh, to an audience uh, like we are talking about national anthems mm. every country has got a national anthem why do they have a national anthem because music brings the country together mm. you know like the minute you listen to the first few notes of the national anthem it does not matter who you are where which geographic location you come from in india or you're living abroad also as an indian immediately you will have a sense of pride of being an indian and that's what music does music brings people together mm. and uh, so that is what so basically when it comes to giving a very strong message about about uh, taking care of our environment taking care of mother nature mitigating the effects of climate change reducing our uh, consumption of uh, single use plastics reducing air pollution there are music is a very very good way to communicate all of these issues and to also celebrate our beautiful planet what's the difficulty you faced while recording this national anthem sir actually there was no difficulty because uh, the thing is that everybody collaborated beautifully um i think probably the only difficulty was the flight to britain that's all <laughs> <laughs> that took a very long time and i did not get any sleep on the flight but otherwise i think everything was fine i think it was it was a pretty enjoyable experience so now it's being released on the uh, even before independence day and how do you do you feel any tension or kind of no i just wanted to uh, i mean the tension would be there if there is some expectation in return yeah you know that uh, that i'm expecting to make a lot of money i'm expecting to uh, sell it or you know that kind of a thing mm. or i'm expecting to get box office returns in the first day so that tension is not there mm. i'm just hoping and praying that you know that as many people listen to it and as many people share it and people feel proud of our country when they listen to it so we're releasing it on the 14th of august at 5 pm as you know and uh, uh, just a little bit before independence day mm. so that on independence day everybody have the opportunity to share it So and so coming to the Grammy Awards so you won three Grammy Awards and you are representing our country on such a big stage so how does that feel So uh, obviously it feels amazing uh, uh, so one should not work uh, for awards that's very important but when awards happen we should be very grateful for it So my music is all about a purpose uh, as we mentioned positive social impact environment refugees children's rights various topics So I believe that awards always gives you a platform Uh, for doing bigger and better things mm -hmm. so a lot of people say oh i i don't care about awards and all of that stuff you, even me i do not make music to win awards but when i win an award i'm very very happy and very grateful uh, simply because every award gives you a platform for more and more people to take you seriously yeah like before my first grammy award in 2015 some people would take me seriously some people would not take me seriously mm -hmm. some people would take my message on the environment seriously some people would not yeah. but after i won that grammy award more people started taking me seriously the second award more people third award more people yeah. so that's the idea you earlier said in an interview that you have been working in a malayalam film yes and about that i completely forgot we should have talked about that <laughs> so i just finished a malayalam film called adrishya jalakangal mm. it's with tomino thomas and directed by dr biju nayar mm -hmm. uh, biju kumar sorry okay. and uh, dr biju kumar is a two time national award uh, winning uh, director fantastic director mm. and he narrated this script to me um, uh, last year it's an anti war movie but shot beautifully yeah. uh, and beautiful narrative very good perspective about how when there is war the uh, the people uh, the rich people and the privileged people are the ones who make all the decisions <laughs> uh, but the people who suffer are the poor people yes. so it's 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 a beautiful film and tobino i don't think anybody would have seen him in this avatar you know <laughs> he has acted so well and his look is so different from uh, what it is normally yeah. and nemisha also as the actress she's done a fabulous job so 
it's a very very good movie and i hope that i think it's going to be releasing around october okay. and i hope everybody uh, watch it because it's going to cut across languages this is one of those films which has got very very little dialogue it's mainly music throughout the film okay. so i'm very excited about this film and it's going to it and it's got a very strong social message okay sir so thank you thank you so much ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತಿ ನೀವು ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಏಷ್ಯಾ ನೆಟ್ ಸುವರ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂಸ್